had this a few years ago in Washington. It was about 110 degrees. So this is actually cool. So it's good to see you. It's good to be here with you. It's good to stand up for freedom and democracy. It's good to stand up and say that we want the people of Iran to have the same rights as people all over the world. The people of Iran are good people. Unfortunately, the Iran is ruled by a theocracy and by people. Oh, my mask, okay. Now it'll be a lot cooler also. So let me say, it's great to see so many people and for me to be here with my Iranian American friends. Thank you for what you're doing. It's just so important. I want to acknowledge the great suffering of the Iranian people displayed here. And as you know, you walk by any of these columns, any of these pictures, and you see the young people, it sort of breaks your heart as a father of three. It just breaks my heart to see these young people who were all murdered by a regime that doesn't care about human life. The terrific, horrific crimes the regime in Tehran has been committing for over four decades is not something that we can just sit idly by and watch without condemning. Two years ago, as I mentioned at a similar event on this historic lawn, I lamented the loss of so many bright human beings in Iran and said, this is a quote from me, what is so disgraceful is that many of the people who were responsible for the massacre of these beautiful young people here are the very people who have high positions in the Iranian regime today. Unfortunately, nothing has changed. Just days after that gathering to commemorate the 1988, which by the way was the first year I was elected, the 1988 massacre of 30,000 prisoners, political prisoners. We saw nationwide protests erupt in Iran in November of 2019. We witnessed how the regime, which is the number one state sponsor of terrorism in the world, applied this terrorism against protesters, Iranian protesters, human beings, fellow countrymen and women, taking at least 1,500 innocent lives. And again, we have here today the pictures and stories of some of those murdered. I urge you to really go look at it if you haven't already. It'll break your heart, but we'll give you the incentive to keep fighting. Since then, as you all know, Khamenei and his gang have been using the COVID-19 virus against the Iranian people and intentionally withholding the vaccine and treatment from ordinary citizens in Iran. Ignoring the suffering and deaths it has caused, the Ayatollahs want to force people inside their homes with the perverted hope to prevent other nationwide protests. Well, they're wrong. Iranian people's thirst extends beyond that of water or life's basic needs. Yes, they do have thirst for water, the most basic necessity of life, but they hunger for freedom, for liberty, liberty away from Islamic fundamentalism. For more than two weeks, streets of Iran have been brimming with protests, calling for an end to the regime itself, an end to religious tyranny, and an end to persecution of the innocent. So I am pleased that the government of the United States of America has stated its position in support of the protesters' inalienable rights. Remember, inalienable rights is what we said at the start of our republic more than 200 years ago. There is the protester who has inalienable rights, the right to assemble, the right to freely speak, the right to basic needs of life. We're all human beings. We all need that. So what does the Supreme Leader do? Well, he did what I have said that these people have done for four decades. He puts in charge Ibrahim Raisi, the very person who had a big role in per 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 perpetrating the 1988 massacre. A person with a dark history of being a member of the death committee. A person who was chief of Iran's supposed judiciary the last couple of years, had a big role in the killing of 1,500 protesters in 2019, as well as arrest and torture of thousands more. But the free world has other ideas. Amnesty International's general secretary said, and I quote him, that Abraham, that Abraham Raisi has risen to the presidency 
instead of being investigated for the crimes against humanity of murder, enforced disappearance, and torture is a grim reminder that impunity reigns supreme in Iran. The United Nations has also called for a probe into Raisi's role in the massacre. And when I addressed your free Iran 2021 gathering, I expressed my repulsion, this was last month, I expressed my repulsion of Raisi and want to again express some, my support for your call today. A call that Madam Maryam Rajavi has been reiterating. The appointment of Abraham Raisi is a test of whether the international community will engage and deal with this genocidal regime or whether it will stand with the Iranian people. The United Nations and the international community should recognize the 1988 massacre in Iran as genocide and a crime against humanity. I am pleased that President Biden's administration has reiterated sanctions against Raisi for his role in the 1988 killings and pledged to hold Raisi accountable. This is a call supported by Amnesty International, the UN, countless other human rights organizations, and also some of 250 bipartisan, both parties, members of Congress who have co-sponsored House Resolution 118. So I am honored to be with you today to call on the U.S. government to take a leading role in a United Nations-led investigation into the 1988 massacre and Abraham Raisi, as was the case in pre previous genocides in history, accountability is the only way to prevent future crimes and loss of previous life. And lastly, I want to reiterate what I believe is the right path forward on Iran policy for the United States. As I mentioned before, we need to view and treat the terrorist regime in Tehran according to its deeds. Unfortunately, Iran, the Iranian government, is the largest sponsor of state, sponsor of terrorism in the world. That's a disgrace, especially when we know the Iranian people are good people. The Iranian people should be the natural friends of the United States, not the enemy. Iran should be the natural U.S. ally in the region, not other countries and not Iran against the United States. This needs to change. This needs to go according to the will of the Iranian people, not the will of the mullahs who, mullahs who cling to power. The accountability, we have to again view and treat the terrorist regime in Tehran according to its deeds. The accumulation of more than 40 years of experience have driven home the indisputable fact that the clerical regime in Iran is unchangeable, unreformable, and as protesters in Iran are shouting, needs to go in its entirety. It cannot be a partner of any value in any dialogue and cannot represent both the country or its people. The people of Iran will have to do this themselves, but the international community can and must help by holding these oppressors accountable. That is why I support your cause today and why I join my bipartisan House colleagues in supporting you and the people of Iran in their unwavering quest to establish a secular, democratic, non-nuclear republic in Iran. Thank you, and we're going to continue to fight together. <laughs>